Jesus bless this message in Jesus name I pray amen beautiful spring day in the middle of winter <laughs> all right y'all this is the season change different weird odd stuff I've been talking about it's like 69 degrees out here and it's the middle of February should be about 30 degrees that's the days we're living in you can't tell the seasons apart beautiful spring day t-shirt and all in the name of Jesus all right, y'all. So I have a question that was asked to me, and I'm going to answer it for the whole group to hear. A couple, actually. Um, one of them, they talked a lot about the Bible speaking of his sleep. You sleep when you die. And it talks about you being asleep. So there's confusion as to where do you go when you die? Do you just stay asleep in your, in your casket or wherever you're at, on the shelf, wherever? Well, your body does. Your body does. Okay. You don't. Your body does. This cursed object right here does. It goes to sleep. And it stays asleep until resurrection day. Okay? Then if you're a Christian, it will come up and meet your spirit in the air. Which is what the Bible says. But it will come up out of the grave and meet your spirit in the air and get an instant brand new glorified body. So your body sleeps. Yes, you don't. Okay? Uh, you'll need more proof than that. Think of the thief on the cross. All right, you got two thieves on the cross. One of them was mocking Jesus and like everybody else was. And then the other thief stood up for Jesus and said, hey, I don't know. What are y'all mocking him for, man? This man has done no wrong. Me and you, we did wrong. Leave this man alone. Lord, will you remember me when you go to your kingdom? So he did a confession with his mouth and he believed in his heart, right? Jesus said, I'll tell you from this moment on, when you die, when you hang on that cross right there and you die, when you come out of your body, your body going to go to sleep for thousands of years. But you will be with me in paradise instantly, instantly. You understand? So you, this cursed object right here can't get into heaven, y'all. It can't and it won't. It has to wait right here till the fulfillment, till Jesus comes back until all that's fulfilled. This might have died 2,000 years ago. That, that thief is still wherever he's buried at. Bones, maybe, maybe dirt by now, I'm sure. Okay, but his spirit is with God. His spirit, that's who he really is. And I told you, your spirit is who you are. Okay, your body is like a fingernail. You clip a fingernail off, y'all. Y'all don't even think about that fingernail no more. You still go. I'm still walking. I just clipped my fingernails off last night. I'm walking down this driveway. I don't know where my fingernails are in a trash can somewhere. But I'm walking down this road. I know exactly who I'm talking to, what I'm talking about. It's just like that, y'all. You, you continue on. You do. But your skin does not. Okay? So, yes, when you give your life to Jesus, even at the last minute of life you go to God okay if you notice the thief he didn't have time to get baptized in no water he didn't have time to take communion he didn't have time to do anything Jesus said today you will be with me in paradise today okay so if you got somebody that's accepted Jesus on their deathbed then praise God about it y'all because they're going to be with God but those of us that are alive on this earth and we have time to live, then we must finish the process. That person didn't have time to finish anything. They did the most important thing. Okay? They, could, they confessed and repented. Okay? You, you have life to live yet? Then you need to live your life for God because that's why you're here on this planet. If you have uh, asked Jesus as your Savior, finish the process. And get baptized in the water that will save you. And I told you a million times, what is that baptism in the water? Is it ducking up and down in a creek or a swimming pool? No. That's a statement of faith. Jesus talked about two different kinds of baptisms in the water. One's by John and one's by the Holy Spirit. You, need, you must be born baptized in the water that will save you. That's what the Bible says. What does that mean? It means you get into God's word. You get hungry, you look for God, you go find God out, understand him, get an understanding of God, his ways, his will, his purposes, all that's in his word. And you study and you seek and you find it and you start obeying the things God said to do. You start letting Jesus live his life through you the rest of the time you're here on this earth. 
Let Jesus, Jesus finish living his life out through your body, through your actions, through your deeds, through your mouth, through the way you think, all that. That's the baptism in the water. The living water is God's word, y'all. You have to be baptized in that to go to heaven. You must be transformed into this person Christ-like. But Satan's going to do everything in his power to make sure you don't. So it's a battle. It's a war. And you're going to have to have the Holy Spirit. You're going to have to take your time. See, there's people walk around thinking, I, got, I can do nothing. I can do nothing. I have nothing to do. I'm sorry. You've been taught wrong somewhere along the way. you got a lot to do. You got a lot to do. It's a relationship, y'all, with you and Jesus. And a relationship is two people, you and Jesus. Relationships are not one way. I'm sure you know how relationships go. It takes two. Communication back and forth. Understanding back and forth. Helping each other back and forth. It's a two-way street. So you have to take your desires, your time, your efforts and get into God's word and obey the things he's told you to do. You got to trust him. You got to trust him. There's a lot you got to do. Okay. It's a two way relationship, God and you, not a one way, just God doing everything for you. Now you got, you got your line of stuff to do too. If you don't have that kind of hunger for God, but you kind of wish you did, well then ask him for it, ask him for it. And then take your time Sit down and study the word. And Jesus showed me a very specific way to study that word, y'all, that helps ramp up your interest in it, helps ramp up your desire, and that you will learn. Okay? And I show it to y'all all the time. I have not seen another person on this planet explain things, how to study God's word the way Jesus himself explained it to me to teach me and all you. And I'm going to tell you something, I've been studying his word since April 24, 2020, and I, it's just, I feel like uh, I, I couldn't have learned this much from anybody on this planet. There's no way. And, and some of the stuff he's taught me is, is it's biblical, but it's like hidden. It's like hidden. Every single denomination, every religion, I've never heard nobody say it before. But then when God tells you, which he's told it to me, he's revealed things to me that I've not heard people say out there anywhere. And then when you read the Bible, it actually says it. It's like it's concealed. It has to be opened by the Holy Spirit only. But that's what he's doing. But that's why he ordained me. Jesus did himself. Okay, so I can get that kind of understanding. Obviously, he wants me to have it. And I got it. But you will get your own understanding, God. Guys, listen. If you don't get a hunger for Jesus Christ and be willing to obey him in everything, every time he says to do it, get regular on obeying God and everything you get like that. You're going to, he's going to open your understanding of him. You're going to hear him. Every single one of you come to this channel because you want to hear God and he's teaching you how to hear him. Okay. You want to hear God. You need to make sure your desire is ramped up. You're doing all you can do to know God. You're in his word every day. You're just, you're not just reading it. You're studying it. You're following my videos. You're coming to Google Meets if you can. You are taking all these lessons and soaking them up like a sponge because they're coming straight from the throne room. Every single one of them. They ain't coming from no school, no theological college, no church. They're coming from the throne room. Straight through my mouth, straight into your home. Take them very serious, y'all. Study like that. Get hungry for God like that and start obeying the things right away. Don't ever let there be one thing you say, well, I can't do that right now. Or no, 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 do, do, do. Even when you think you can't, you do, you do. It shows God you trust him. Okay. Don't put nothing on this earth ahead of God. Trust him in all things and watch him move. God loves to prove. He don't have to. He ain't got to prove himself. He already did. He don't have to. But he loves to prove himself to those that trust him. He loves to do that. He calls it blessing you. He loves to do that, especially when he knows this. Wow, this person trusts me like that. He will come through and you will have the most blessed life. I'm telling you. But people don't get blessed because they don't obey him, y'all. In everything. Obey God. He's God. You know what I'm saying? Help the people. Help your church. Help God. 
You help God by giving your life to him and obeying him and letting him live his life through you. Help God. Help yourself. Because your eternal destination banks on it, y'all. Okay, so bottom line, <laughs> if you give your life to Jesus Christ at the last minute, yes, you'll go to heaven, just like the thief on the cross. But if you're on this earth and you got time to live your life, then you need to finish it. You need to give your whole, because Jesus said you're saved by grace through faith. And then he also said you must be born of water. Unless you are born of water and of spirit, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. So what does that mean? You said, I thought we could only be saved by repenting. But then he said over here, if you're not born by spirit and water, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. Well, because you got to finish it. It starts off with your decision, your confession, your decision, your repenting, and then you have to finish it. Complete the heart. You got to finish it by going and getting baptized in the water. That means letting, when you're baptized in the water, y'all, that's when he's transforming your behavior, your character. He transforms you. It's, it's not complete, y'all. Even though you're saved and if you give your life to Jesus, you'll, you die, you'll go to heaven. But I'm saying if you have time to walk on this earth, you got more time, then you have to complete the process, which is letting him transform your life. Baptize in the water that will save you. That's God's word. And that's transforming your life into this new person. Then you go into the physical body of water and do a baptism as a statement saying, I am. I mean this from my heart. I'm going under this water and that person is dead. I'm coming up. I'm going to be this new person. That doesn't save you. But that's a statement to God and to you and to everybody else around you. Now, God said, worship him in spirit and in truth. Did you mean that? Because if you go out and you keep disobeying God, you never meant it. You lied to him. Don't lie to God. Make your mind up, y'all. And that's something you got to do. Make your mind up. Okay? That's if you have time to live on this earth. Finish it. And do be what God has you on this earth to be. A worshiper of God and go out and help the people in the world around you. Because that's what God's spirit does. And that's what he's going to do through us. Those of us that love God, we obey him. And that's what we do. We're doers of the word. Okay? Hope that helps answer your, your question. Uh, we have Google Meets tonight, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Go to JesusDoers.com. It'll tell you how to get on it. Google Meets. Same code all the time. Uh, the Holy Spirit is just flooding in that room. He is teaching us stuff. That's, I mean, it's just incredible, y'all, what he's teaching us in there. Just teaching, teaching, teaching. God's word is flowing. Him, He's weeded out some of the problems in there. He's weeded them out. And he's brought in new people that are on fire for God that are on fire for God, okay? So be on fire for God, y'all. Forsake not assembling yourselves together. The group is growing, okay? But the rest of you that are scared to come, come. Forsake not assembling yourselves together. I've had people come in this group, quite a few of them, that said, I've been to church 20, 30, 60 years, and I've never learned the things I'm learning here in this group. And the Bible's backing it up. Because it's the Holy Spirit teaching you, literally. These lessons don't come from no theological school. They come from the throne room. Okay? All right, so I will see y'all tonight. Me and Igor is earnestly working to, to uh, seek the Lord and get all these lessons put together for you to help you. Why? Because it helps you walk with the Lord and get into the kingdom of heaven. Because that time's coming soon, y'all. Keep your eyes on what's going on with Russia. I give it mm, maybe a week, maybe a week. It's going to be full scale on. I'm telling you, maybe a week, maybe almost a week. It's going to be full scale on. Watch what I say. Okay. Things are moving up. Jesus Christ, y'all, he's coming. He's coming, and his time of his coming is moving forward with or without you. It's moving forward. So grab onto his train and ride with him, y'all. Now's the time not to let Satan steal you through worldly possessions and dishonoring and disobeying God. Now's not the time. It's time to let that go. Let that go. All right. Help God's people. All right. Thank those of you that are have helped with the fundraiser. It's going on the rest of the month, the rest of the whole month. Okay. Um, we did send to Africa. Um, I spoke with the leader in Africa. And she hasn't been able to contact us for the past little over 30 days because I send to them sometimes twice a month, but every month. 
um, things you send in, a lot of that goes to Africa, okay? And she'll send me pictures of stuff at the garbage dump, stuff that we've helped get. But I haven't heard from her in the past a little over a month until yesterday. And she's a, an evangelist there, very on fire for God. Anyway, um, she's in a very poor, poor part of Africa, Namibia. Okay, she herself is very poor. Um, that whole part of Africa has been out of power totally for over a month. And they have no water. They're having a water crisis. They have to go far away to find water, and they're having a hard time finding water. So that's why we haven't heard anything the past month. So just don't worry about Jesus said, listen, y'all, there's a reason why we do. We do. Me and you, we do. We help them people where they have no way to get help. Shame on you, man, if you used to help them parts of people in Africa. And because of your personal problems, you quit helping Africa. Well, you'll have to deal with God about that because those people have no way. Just because you get upset and mad about something and you quit helping Africa, you blame, take it out on Africa, and you still think you're walking with God? Shame, 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 y'all. Get your heart like God, y'all. Get your heart like God. Think like Jesus. Do like Jesus. What does he care about? He cares about the people. His heart. Because we're made from his heart. The people, y'all. It's a shame what Satan has done to the people of this world. Just got people cold as ice, man. Cold as, and very selfish. Very selfish, y'all. Jesus wants to change that about each one of you. He wants that changed. Be more Christ-like. Get your heart back on fire for God. Reach out and help the people. It ain't that God's saying, do this, I'm going to let you hurt. He said, I will bless you. Do you understand that part? I will bless you. It's like trying to pull teeth out of an alligator's mouth to get somebody to help somebody, y'all. That's a shame. But I got a platform. And I know what obeying God is about. And I know what people struggle in obeying God in. And I'm going to teach it till the day I die. Till the day I die... And some of you, your hearts will change. And thank God, I'll see you on that narrow road. But Jesus looked at me square in the eyes. He says, some will listen, some will not. I understand. I really do. I teach 2,211 people. I understand. I really do. Jesus, I pray for these people. In Jesus' name, that they'll wisen up. Open their hearts, open their eyes, and be more like you, Jesus. They will receive you into their very being and do what you did. In Jesus' name, I pray over these people. In Jesus' name, amen. I'll see y'all at Google Meets tonight. Anything you need is in the description or on JesusDoers.com. God bless.